We've put down a water hog premier mat and one of our tri-grip mats, and we're going to put sand and water on both mats. Then we're going to walk across them to demonstrate the effect of a mat at the entrance to a building and whether or not it works very, very well uh, to contain the soil and the water uh, that are on the mat. First of all, I'll put some sand on both mats. This is uh, typical sand, if you will. Those of you who are in areas where there is snow and sand is used for traction, we'll find this to be fairly representative of what, uh, what you see on a normal winter day. <clears throat> One of the things you'll notice that uh, there's a difference in where the sand goes on these two mats due to the construction. Uh, the, the sand tends to lay more on the surface of the finishing mat. And in a normal uh, usage, what you'd really want is to have an entrance mat followed by a finishing mat. So there's the sand. Now what I have here is a picture that has two cups of water. And I'm going to put the water on the mat. Two cups. Two cups of water on each. I think right away you can see uh, pretty clearly that there's a difference in the way the mats react to the water uh, as well as to the sand. And now what we're going to do is have people walk across this and uh, just observe what happens to the sand as the uh, traffic uh, goes across it. Now we'll walk across the water hog mat, same process, and we want to observe a very, very graphic difference in the amount of sand that is tracked off and tracked into the building. To summarize, what we've demonstrated today is how an entrance mat works to effectively stop soil and water from entering your building.